that was uh, working remotely for to protect ourselves against the coronavirus before it was cool. Uh, I'm Chris, uh, Jazz Sequence on the internet. I'm here, as always, with my two awesome friends, Gary, who's Binary Gary on the internet, and Allison, who is Allison Plus on the internet. Uh, fun fact, if you couldn't tell, I'm the only one that doesn't have their name in their Twitter handle. Who knew? Because my name is neither name sequence. My name is neither jazz nor sequence. <laughs> it's, name is sequence. Yeah, it's it's, it's surprising. Reynolds. That's the factoid <laughs> about binary jazz. Though. That is that 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 right there. That's the one fact that you if you don't know anything about binary jazz, that's the thing to know. Chris oh. Chris's name is not actually jazz or sequence. I do sometimes I forget. Both of your last names. And, uh, oh, my last name doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I feel like I should introduce people, introduce you to people that way from now on. It's my friend Chris. His name is Jazz Sequence. It's like, this is Chris Jazz Sequence. <laughs> yeah. Was that hyphenated or? No, of course no. not. Oh, no, of course not. Oh. I mean, I think I've said this before, but I did have to introduce myself as Jazz Sequence at the. Um, the one WordPress community summit that I went to many, many years ago uh, at WordCamp San Francisco um, uh, because that was how people knew me. Like I'd say, my name is Chris and like, uh -huh. and I was like, I'm jazz sequence. Oh, I know you. Yeah. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. That's why I stuck the Gary in there. People said, Hey buddy, <laughs> who are you talking to? Gary's a name. Of they, they never say, hi, Hey, binary. I have not been called binary, no. I mean, it's, it's a missed opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Or, never mind. <laughs> Starting to like, try to condense it even more. I'm like, don't do it, else. <laughs> <laughs> I've been called vegan nice. cheese though, so I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. Just I don't know if I mentioned it here before. Oh, uh, Chris, you updated our schedule. I have a date in April. I'm going to be out of town. I should put on there. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. should. I'll uh, circle back to that. I'll put it in our uh, our outage calendar. Which is yeah, I, I did that because I, I was copying and pasting the episode number. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. Super smart. Um, that way we have to think about the binary once. <laughs> despite, yeah. despite the MO of this show, we don't actually count in binary like n natively. No. <laughs> not not when it's gotten Native this high. Now we, we we could do it for a, a a little while, but like now it's just like there's no way. There's no possible way that my brain can do that math. I am comfortable counting to sixteen in binary. And okay. then that, is that on your resume? Weird. That should be. That should be on your fucking resume. I can count to sixteen <laughs> in binary. It's like it should I be like a well. bullet point, bullet point after I've built like WordPress uh, and like uh, whatever you know software. I can name Pi to fourteen digits. Mm -hmm. I can binary to tw twenty places. <laughs> I can only build like and eight I built digits. I think a, a space bot. Um, I have a friend in another I think, Slack. I think we should who, write Gary's resume. Yeah. I. You know what? I. Yeah. I do feel like all, yeah. of our, all of our resumes would benefit from ev everyone else writing it. I, I mean, like, I kind of feel, I've been, wow. I've been, I've been very self-critical uh, the last couple weeks, and I feel like somebody else would write my resume way better than I would, so. Also, I, um, I love the idea of a life resume, because I feel like, it's just like, it, it's just better, like, really good at naps. Like, <laughs> <laughs> finds the best sunbeam to lie in. <laughs> like, wait, wait. So, you so what you're saying is I like, I am a cat. <laughs> yeah, like a cat. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a friend in other Slack who's working on a Slack bot, and they were like, "Oh, you might want to leave this channel. It's going to get noisy." 
And I said, oh, buddy, let me tell you about noisy channels and writing Slack bots. <laughs> I am here for it. And I am totally here to support you. And, and I wish we had some logs of when uh, Ground Control Bot was uh, being created and mm. the night after night after night after night of stupid messages when things weren't working. Oh, it was so good. Uh, <laughs> Yes, thank you for your patience in that. And I'm glad that I will be able to pay it for someone else writing a bot. I have a specific Twitter account for testing bots, so I don't annoy my normal friends. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I follow that, that's, that's definitely... Um, I haven't actually utilized... Like, I haven't done anything with Twitter bots in forever because their API changed and I just kind of... Oh, right. I remember that. I don't know. I'm sure it's still doable, but I just wasn't up for the like mental overhead of figuring it out. No, that makes sense. When Twitter pivoted to the um, uh, political mud wrestling, that's, yeah, they had to kill that, the bot API. It makes sense. I'm also finding it, it was difficult because, like, they were really um, up in arms about, like, you needing a phone number attached to each account. But I don't want to do that. And you can yeah. only have the same one, like, different phone numbers. And I can't get different, like, that's not a thing that... And then, like, yeah. you can get, like, Google numbers, but that's not the same thing, and you still can't get, I don't know, it's turned into a whole thing. I'm like, I was just like, how much do I want this bot that generates, like, a rock star Patronus? I was like, I, like, had to, like, put it on the back shelf. <laughs> How's that? How you... um, there is, there is a, I have totally forgotten, but there is some sort of, like, web-based, uh, not really drag and drop, but, like, you could you could build a bot like logic through like a web application, and I was wondering if that uh, like a Twitter bot specifically, um, it's the thing that that generates uh, brrr, uh, patron saint of the day or whatever. Is it tracery? Um, maybe. I was wondering if that still worked. Because oh, I assume I assume that there's if they're still doing it, then they would still work. Yeah, you'd think so. I should just do it like that. Because that would that was like that was like oh I could do it that way well then that makes everything a lot easier because <laughs> yeah. like it, I've, I'm pretty sure you can like uh, build in like responses to certain things too yeah which is what Bowie Bot lacks which I always wanted to add on but I'm almost like don't it's like Bowie Bot is like a Jenga where I'm like just let's all like, leave it be for you. yeah yeah <laughs> I uh, I can relate to that I I added the feature to ground control bot like six months ago where it tells you how many people are currently in space or the temperature on Mars. Um, but, but I looked at the code and I wanted to refactor like how the messages are sent to the Slack teams and decided that like, if I pull this piece out, I may never send another message to Slack again. So I'm going to leave it. And I think that's the nature of bots. I think that's why they're like very much in the moment. Like I don't think there's a lot of like reiteration in my opinion. Um, I also feel like there's a part when you're really diving deep into a thing like that. Like it's, it's creative, but then there's also like the strict confines of code. Like you get in there and there's this magic that happens in your brain. And it's like, it's your world. Like you can engage and disengage, but for a while it's your world. And so then when you come back to it, you're like, it's, you know, it, it's, it's someone else's it world. Yeah. Well, I mean, even if no one else has touched the code, but you look at it, you, it's like, it's like your bedroom when you leave, you grow up and you leave, you come back to your childhood bedroom, you go, yeah, yeah, this used to be me, but, but not anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's, that's kind of how I feel kind of a code base. I'm like, oh, uh, and maybe, I don't know, maybe there'll be a point where I am able to re-engage and get in and, and get this silly over-engineered queuing system in place. Maybe it'll just be another type of bot. On that, the big that's thing. me. That's me when I'm looking at old like uh, plugins and stuff that I've written and it's like uh, done like the WDS way or the way that I wrote things before WDS or like and I know that like in 10 years if I look at stuff that I've written now that I'll um, they'll be like oh that's what I was writing when I was at Human Made you know yeah. like yeah. Oh, when I look or at that's stuff, what that's the human-made standards were in 2010, 2015. Well, not 2000. I wasn't human-made in 2010. Somewhere I have the CSS file for my old live journal. And when I was looking at the CSS, and you can tell I have no that's idea amazing. what I'm writing. And it's amazing. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, yeah, really hilarious customizations. I'm like, oh, yeah, these things are important. <laughs> like custom bullet points. Some bullet points, yeah.
Yeah, but yeah. there's there's a certain uh, value in that kind of uh, unnecessary work, right? Like it exercises muscles and helps you understand things in, in different ways. Like, yeah, it's probably something I'll never do ever again in my life. But, but like the experience, I think, changes the way the brain works. Mm-hmm. I used to make custom cursors for websites. Oh, what? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I I actually had a I actually had a project where they requested uh, a squirrel as their custom cursor. Um, because <laughs> because their product that they were selling was like a bird feeder that could not be defeated by squirrels or something. <laughs> Like it was, a, it basically it was a stake in the ground that had a little yeah. hook for your bird feeder to go on, and the squirrel couldn't climb up it. Although I'm sure the fucking squirrel could climb up it, but well, they can now. This was years ago. <laughs> they've, they've, yeah, they've learned. Um, they couldn't Google how to climb like curved yeah. bird feeders. <laughs> so um, it really is the internet. Uh, and so they wanted, they wanted, and they had this like squirrel motif that they used throughout the site, and they wanted their their <laughs> cursor to be a squirrel and I'm like let's let's pause for a minute and appreciate yeah. the phrase squirrel motif. <laughs> I want that to be the name of um, a bluegrass band. Squirrel motif. Yes. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'd like to mention uh, to show you and introduce to you Gary and his squirrel motif. <laughs> it's uh sound a little Texas in twang there. Yeah, well. Very very, but like, it's a traveling, I, I have, I have a limited number of twangs. <laughs> yeah. I have a limited number of twangs, and I don't know where any of them come from. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little curious to see if I develop a, a drawl when I move to North Carolina. I think you will. You do? I hope so. I probably I really will. I hope, hope so, so too. I'm, I'm betting right? on it. <laughs> yeah. Although, I don't know. I mean, not that, not that it... Uh, there's not a heavy accent in Utah, but there's certainly places where like especially in the rural areas where um there's there's a bit of a a thing um in utah but it's it's mostly just you know and and that's uh, honestly like a lot of call centers are based in utah because our accent is so just generic american accent um but but the one thing that uh that i have picked up since uh moving to utah like 18 years ago, uh, 19, um, is saying y'all. But I mean, like, and it used to feel really uncomfortable. Um, but like, with inclusivity and like not wanting to say guys and like everything else, like y'all just kind of sounds a little bit better. Works. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you can say it without forcing it, then even even better. Just embrace your Dolly Parton self. Y'all. <laughs> It's hard to say y'all without some kind of an accent. Yeah. So. Y'all. When I moved up to Jacksonville from down near the Tampa area, like I moved further into the south. Down near the Tampa area? In the past, <laughs> yes. Um, and I, I initially was uh, surprised at the um, southern Georgia, northern Florida mm-hmm. accent. Now I don't know. I don't hear it anymore. Hmm. Maybe I've been cured or maybe everyone dropped their accent. I don't know. Whatever. Everyone and dropped it. I'm sure. Just like, oh, wait, why? why I just are we pictured doing like that? a group meeting of everyone being like, you know what? Let's just forget yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, it's not really, uh, no one's really t- picking it up as like a North Florida thing. I think we just move on, you know? Yeah. Like, let's, let's do the diesel truck thing where we spew fuel under, you know, diesel into the air. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. And become like a, a punchline on uh, the good place. Yeah, that works for me. Okay, good. That works. Off we go. I love Jason Mendoza. <laughs> that was um, have you watched the final the season, topic? Gary? I have watched the okay. final season. Yes, I and I not. really enjoyed. You have not. I have okay. not. All right. So I really not. enjoyed a YouTube video I saw the other day of uh, Tori Bruno of ULA giving a tour to uh, oh, what's the name of the podcast? Came in the podcast. Um, it's not Smarter Every Day. Maybe it is Smarter Every Day. Whatever the podcast. I think it is Smarter Every Day. Um, but he went through the production of um, of rockets in their facility in Alabama, uh, and it was amazing. It was like an hour long, and I spent the entire hour totally engaged and 
like I wanted to reach the screen and ask questions. <laughs> that dude is uh, really fantastic with, uh, with bringing engineering to the public. He is a hidden gem in the space industry. Sorry, Bruno, shout out. All right, so. <laughs> uh, this is a show where we typically <laughs> talk about uh, uh, a topic that, that Alice yeah, and Space brings, makes its way into. That, that Gary and I uh, know nothing about in advance, and then we try to uh, describe or talk about what we think the topic that Allison has brung to us, brung to us, uh, is. There's I'm a getting phrase. To, I, I, I don't know, like, I, I, uh, that sentence ended up in some place where, like, I got to the end of the sentence and I forgot where I started. I started, I felt, I feel like J Joe Biden did, must do every day. <laughs> that would require some awareness. I, um, before the topic, I have to say, here's a Southern phrase I used the other day at work and people were like, what in the hell are you talking about? Um, and we were talking about, like, some weird interaction with the client. Uh, I said, you know what they say, dance with the one what brung you. And they went, what? what? I said, dance with the one what brung you. Like, what? Dance with the one that brought you? Like, what? Yeah. Never mind. I did not realize that wasn't like a common phrase. I thought that. But listen to like, it. Huh? Of course da it's. Dance like, with the one what brung you. Yeah. That, well, that in, in high, yes. Yeah, so Paul exposed to me, like, that's not even close to like proper English, let alone <laughs> coherent. How would I understand that? All right. Well, you're. Point, I guess is valid, but it, in my head, it was just a normal phrase until I said it and felt like an idiot. Uh, I quickly moved on. To you, you should you idiot. should certainly not feel like an idiot for saying something that you have heard many times before and doesn't make any sense to anybody else. I think I think that is fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think the phrase is bizarre and definitely localized, like a regional thing. But like, you shouldn't be ashamed of like repeating that phrase. Yeah, it perhaps it is. Yeah, perhaps it is a localized phrase and I did not realize, but yeah, you know. Do uh, you have any phrases like that in your own family though that you know like your kids will repeat and then other kids will be like, what are you even talking about? Because I've just like, my family has stuff like that probably. that I've then taken out and I'm like living in the 1940s apparently. I'm like, oh, it was parked all cattywampus. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and then people are like, what are you talking about? Oh um, God. I mean, I probably do, but I don't think I'm aware of them. And that's, that's kind of yeah. terrifying. And that's, yeah. That, that's, that's the thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's kind of one of those things where you say it, and then later on people are like, Did, what, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. It's just the way he talks. It's fine. Yeah, it's he fine. just meant that it was fouled up. It was yeah. screwy. So anyway. All right, I, I, challenge, I challenge the two of you to uh, call yeah. me on any weird phrase that I, that I may say uh, that, that sounds a little off. Yeah. <laughs> and and because I, I would like to know and i will try my best to pull out the weirdest things that might be residing in my brain <laughs> all right that seems fair. wow <laughs> I, I can't wait <laughs> i mean like nifty but that's a thing that people say ironically I think that's so a thing people say yeah yeah is nifty if so if cattywampus is a 40s word is nifty a 50s word Sure. I don't even know if it's an like if cattywampus is an older word. I just I feel like it oh, must it be is. something my grandparents said and we've just like yeah. grabbed onto it. Yeah, I've heard cattywampus from folks independent of this show. Yeah. I mean, I, I have heard not that word in my lifetime, but not like out not in the like, common lexicon. Yeah, it's not a thing that people say, but I've definitely. <laughs> I've definitely come across it at some point. But I was like, this is the perfect descriptor for, what did I say, that parking the job? Parking, yeah. The parking job, yeah. I mean, I, I, can, I can visualize a cattywampus <laughs> yeah. parking job is the thing. It's like somebody trying to parallel park and they're just like, it's the job done. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So I also visualize this parallel parking and not like- I mean, that's, that's the thing, right? You, yeah. That parking job is cattywampus. Damn. That, that's that's what actually it a really good word, isn't it's it? It's obvious. There was implied meaning that that we both <laughs> captured from that without knowing any more. That's that's a that's that a damn a good word right up. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like and, and it, good ones. <laughs> it, it saves it saves the whole description about the, the bad parallel parking job. You just see yeah. the, the 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 that car is parked cattywampus, and then it just communicates everything. Even if people think, "Wow, that word is weird," <laughs> <laughs> they still get the point. Yeah, that's true. Um, to, today's topic, this week's topic, is not cattywampus. All right. <laughs> it, be. 
It is the Fleming response. Fleming. The Fleming response. Okay, is that P H like it's, Fleming? No, it's <laughs> or Fleming like a person named Joseph Fleming. F L E H M E N. Whoa, F L E H M E N. Fleming response. Yeah, obviously, if it was spelled a PH, Chris, it would be uh, related to um, coronavirus. Panicking <laughs> or about global pandemics. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Fleming response. <laughs> like, I see. Someone's constantly you're like, I'm getting the hell out of here. That's my Fleming response. <laughs> Um, plays into all my anxieties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, should we have started this like on our final episode? I mean, is that is that where we are? <laughs> no, Thank you for that. joining us. No, 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 no. Because we we have been self quarantining for three years. Uh, for three years, thirty five over here. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, I meant I meant as a show. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I am a little nervous because I have to do some flying in the next few months, and I'm not sure how that's going to pan out. Oh, well, don't worry. You're you're not one of the disallowed countries that can come into the United States. Yeah. I'm more worried about getting stuck. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also kind of, like, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to get sick, but I think I could be a carrier. And that, and that worries me for my, my family in general. Yeah, um, yeah that, that's, 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 where, that's where we're at. Settle down, dog. Things are in bloom around here, which means like allergies are kicking. So mm -hmm. everyone has so like, everybody knows and is coughing yeah. and sneezing. Well, I read everybody's. today there was a chart today of like symptoms for uh, coronavirus, uh, normal flu, and the cold. And runny nose is very rare in coronavirus cases. So if your nose are run is running, you're safe. You yeah. just have you're just sick, dude. You're just plain old. Well, no, and like it's winter, and so like you're going in and out. So my nose starts running, and immediately right. I start being like, "Why is my nose running?" Right. And I'm like, "Oh, yep. it's just because I went from a cold temperature to a warm temperature. Like it's yeah. not." <sighs> Meanwhile, today I decided to dress like it's summer, so I'm wearing shorts because <laughs> I was like, nice. "I'm not going anywhere." <laughs> <laughs> like there's a coronavirus out there. Yeah. yeah. I've been planning uh. this my whole life. <laughs> um, also, I response. feel like it's very disheartening to find out how many people haven't been washing their hands. <laughs> like, like this is a surprising thing. <laughs> I just like, I guess Wait. I just like to think the best of people. Wait, people don't wash their hands? No. <laughs> you obviously have not lived in this house. <laughs> <laughs> I watch my kids come in like from doing who the hell knows what, and then they like, oh, I'm gonna go have a Z bar. Kids are the worst. Kids are just like little germy clouds. They're like pig pen. Did you wash your hands? No. When was the last time you washed your hands? Uh, Thursday. Uh... <laughs> I've, I've, you know, you're like, you're supposed to sing the alphabet twice. Uh, I, I saw wait, somebody. I'm in a public bathroom and bust out of the sink. A, B, C, D, E, at the top so, of my lungs. So I, I so, yeah, or, or happy birthday twice. But um, somebody oh. tweeted a while ago uh, a bunch, a list of alternate songs that have 20 minute, 20 minute, 20 second choruses. Man, I'm um, serious about this. So, uh, and so they're like as alternatives to singing uh, Happy Birthday twice or the alphabet or whatever. Um, so I've been singing ever since then uh, Prince's Raspberry Beret when I wash my hands. That's an and amazing it, choice. It works because I like, I had the, I had the song in my head. I had the beat so I can like, I'm not like skipping through it. Like, it's not just like, yeah. happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I may have shared at some point when Katie was learning to sing the alphabet, she would sing like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then W, X, Y, and Z, and then would follow it with, like she would skip all the letters, and then she would follow it with, I don't know my A, B, C, Z. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the most adorable thing in the world. And um, That was almost a spit take on uh, our podcast. It was the first spit take of Binary Jazz. Uh, uh, Fleming response. So, uh, you know, go ahead. I was going to say, I suspect it has something to do with when you are flying 
and when you land and you still feel like you're on a plane, you know, like you just kind of feel like it's, you know, bouncing in your butt. <laughs> I feel it in my butt. I don't know where you feel it. <laughs> would that be related to, uh, would that be related to like, uh, as, as the uh, sailors say, not having your land legs? Um, yeah, why not? Not <laughs> having your land legs. I because it's a, it's the same it's the same experience you're like in a moving vehicle and and your body adjusts to the movement and then you stop moving and you're like whoa he's gone our conversation yeah. isn't here uh, unable to respond to my to my question uh cold. did you say i'm cold no no coffee is cold coffee is cold oh well like lukewarm you need one of those desk warmer things like i have I had a, uh, <clears throat> I have an enterprise account I'm working on right now that requires VPN access, which of course requires logging into a thing with dual factor authentication and all sorts of other stuff. And I call in and say, hey, I'm a contractor. I'm working on blah, blah, blah. And they say, cool, let us remote into your uh, company computer. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a contractor. I don't have a company computer. And they're like, oh, um, all right, let me walk you through this. And so yesterday it was like, four hours on the phone, ticket to ticket. Oh. Today it's been another hour so far. It's not ideal is what I'm saying. Not yeah. ideal. Yeah. I'm not hearing yeah. idealness at all. Yeah. It's all right. It is, it's the, you know, it's the nature of enterprise. I had a, I had a project that was a little bit like that too, but it didn't require a VPN. So at least, at least not for what we were doing. They did have a VPN, but we didn't need the VPN into it. Um, Fleming response. Uh, I felt like I had an idea and then I lost it because of the uh, various other things. Um, okay, it's my fault. It's fine. <laughs> uh, a Fleming response is when you immediately have, uh, it, like, like what we would what we would call your knee jerk reaction is actually mm -hmm. a Fleming response. Mm -hmm. So, like the first the first Sense. thought you have when confronted with a new piece of information. Uh, even if you're like, you haven't had time to fully like digest or think about it, it's just, like your immediate, like <clears throat> Fleming response. Uh, named oh. after, as I said, uh, <laughs> what was it? Joseph, uh, Joseph Fleming. Joseph Fleming? Yeah. Actually, actually not Joseph. It's Yosef Fleming. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mispronounced it the first time. Yeah. Uh, uh, Joseph Fleming. J O S E F uh, from uh, Austria, uh, who uh, developed or, or uh, discovered the response uh, when he himself had a Fleming response <laughs> in in a conversation, and then did a study on these responses and other people. So, so peer reviewed, peer reviewed uh, by his identical twin sister. <laughs> Ada. It, it, was, it was all the rage in in like the eighteen eighties. Have you read the Fleming document? <laughs> <laughs> it turned my head all cattywampus. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, I, I, I can't get my head out of the association with the word Fleming. So <laughs> go with it. just with go with one. that. <laughs> no, I mean, I think I already went with it. I think, I think it's, <laughs> I mean, it, it, yeah. it might, it might help that I have it like on the screen next to me and it's spelled correctly and it's not spelled P H. Like if I had it in my head as still being P H. You can also say, it starts with F. You, it's the Fleming reaction, but you can also use it as a verb. So Fleming or Flemining. I like Flemining. Flemining. Yeah. Flemining. Is this, this, you know what this is? This is, this, <laughs> I know what this is. This is like when you make lemonade and you, and you, you're Flemining to mix it all together. Uh, describe that action again. <laughs> just kind of. Wooden spoon, you know. The spoon. Life gives lemon, the sugar, the water, ice. When life yeah. gives you lemons. Fleming lemon. <laughs> Wow. Oh, I might have to put that on uh, on my wall. I want that hand stitched. Life is easy. Love it. 
<laughs> you might want to find out what Fleming means first. Oh, perhaps I should. Are we there? <laughs> Is it time? Oh, I don't know. Uh, well, we did get the warning. Oh, yeah. And and we do have a, a basically spam email. Um, oh, yeah, I don't think we have any Allison questions. Yeah. I'm very... Um, <clears throat> The, the well is dry. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the Flemin response, um, it's actually from the German Flemin, which means to bear the upper teeth. But bear it's the upper teeth. Yeah, but it's a behavior when an animal curls back their upper lip and expose <laughs> their front teeth and inhale. And it's to basically smell better. Where? Yeah. Smell better, not like, <laughs> like. <laughs> to, to to make them able to smell yeah. things better, yeah. not to make their scent exactly. more pleasant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was like, wait a second. I was right up. I was, I was with you right up until smell better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's usually like um, it's cats a lot of the time. They'll just open their mouth, basically, and do that. Yeah, I've seen Max do that. So they're flemming. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. Is there is there a human analog? I mean, I'm uh, trying to do it, and I'm not smelling anything better. Yeah, I don't think. Um, I don't think so because I don't think we have the same gland that basically yeah. facilitates those pheromones and scents being transferred. Yeah. Also, it probably has to do with with the proximity of our nose to our lip. Oh, maybe. I would think. Um, because our nose is protruderant, which is a new word, protruderant. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, so, therefore, curling back our li lip wouldn't make any difference other than if we perhaps wanted to smell our top teeth. Mm. Um. Yeah. We're all like trying out different <laughs> facial like Okay, so so the moral of this story is if if you're listening to this podcast, you absolutely need to go to the YouTube channel and watch this show because there's a <laughs> lot of stuff going on that you're going to miss on if you're just getting the audio. But fast forward to this spot. Unless wait. Well, I mean, we also, we also, uh, I mean, we would want to get the, the Flemming uh, visual when you're like the mixed oh, lemonade. Yeah. Right. I don't know what I was using to mix it in. Perhaps like a Home Depot bucket. Yeah. <laughs> a big orange bucket. What, what are the ones that says, let's do this? <laughs> yes. Yeah. We I, got how, a, how um, buckets? we got a Home oh. Depot, let's do this bucket uh, because we had gotten um we were going camping somewhere and we we're going camping somewhere that didn't have bathrooms and so we were getting ourselves um uh like a uh like a toilet thing uh that you could do out in places um and the original idea was that you put this sort of toilet seat thing on top of a bucket and so aaron thought it would be ironic if the bucket said let's do this let's do this as in, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> um, how many buckets? Do we you never own? actually, we never actually use the let's do this bucket. How many buckets do we own? Yeah. Uh, well, there's a let's do this bucket. Yeah. Uh, I want to say like three. We're not a big bucket then, household here. Yeah, I've ended up with a lot on home improvement stuff. I'm just curious what a normal amount of buckets would be because I feel like I have an abnormal amount. Yeah, we have we have the let's do this bucket, which doesn't actually, which never has gone used. Uh, we have a bucket oh. that has um, currently a bunch of like rock hounding type tools because uh, sure. we took it when we went rock hounding, and so that we just stuffed all of our stuff and we got a whole bunch of stuff for it, so we just put it all in there. And then we have one other bucket that I don't think I think we have used it in the past for um, like gardening stuff um like putting like weeds and stuff in but we actually have these like wheelie cart things that we use for that instead so we that one also kind of goes uh and used generally but i think we have a total of three buckets. i definitely have more than three i probably have a dozen and a half i think wow jesus yeah. a, is a dozen and a half one and a half dozen or is yes. it 12.5 well what <laughs> 
love that question. That's good. Um, no, I think about a half a bucket, I'd chuck it. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's about 18. That might be high. I don't think that's really that high. I, when I did the, uh, it's pretty I high. The, the bedroom, I got, I had like three or four buckets of drywall. But you have a garage. That's I do yeah, have a garage. I, I, I suspect have a spot for bucket storage. That's I would hypothesize that Allison doesn't have any buckets. <laughs> I have, no, she has I have, to have one. I know she doesn't. Of, of like a a Home Depot bucket? No, just yeah, like, a, a, like a, a. I'll use very a very broad brush. But what kind of bucket do you own? <laughs> I don't. I don't own a bucket, Gary. <laughs> she does we not have kind of like. A tiny tub for like cleaning. Yeah, you live in like. Do you live in like an apartment, like a condo or something? Like you don't have a garage. Yeah, we have like right? a one bedroom apartment. It's yeah. like a house that's broken down into apartments. We don't have a garage. We don't. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have a garage, it's it, like a garage or some sort of storage area. Like we don't have a garage either, but we have a, a storage shed. And so if we didn't have a storage, I mean, we, and we also have a basement. Um, if we didn't have those things, there would be no reason to have a bucket. Like where would the bucket go? Like the bucket is so, just taking up space. I, love, I definitely I had a bucket in our apartment when we were first married. We had a bucket. And at that point, I used it for holding tools. It's just like a nice tool catch all. The handles are pointing up, and you can see what you're grabbing pretty quickly. I don't we know. You have a tool box. Bucket, but I also had a tool box, but I had a tool bucket for the bigger tools. I feel I like I need have... to take you on an apartment tour so you I don't, know. I don't think we've ever had a toolbox. My apartment is. Yeah, we, I don't think we've ever had a toolbox. We've had tool drawers. Oh. I have one of those big, ugly, red rolling ones that I bought on clearance from Home Depot mm. or Lowe's. I don't know which. But when I bought it, um, I saw a pickup truck then through the back of the pickup truck, brought it home, and went to open it and realized the drawers and the top were locked and the keys weren't included with it being on clearance. I'm like, oh. Nice. Well, oh, no. I went back to the store and I'm like, hey, I just bought this. And I understand there's no return because it was on clearance, but I literally can't use it because I can't open it. And they were like, oh, well, maybe they're hanging around here somewhere. Um, and so they dug like into this cash drawer and they're like, here's a couple keys in a bag. Maybe these are them. And I took it home and lo and behold, they were the keys for it. And <clears> it was nice. different keys, one for the top and one for the bottom. Different. I, I'm baffled that it was that easy. I thought I was going to like drill out the locks. I don't know what I thought I was going to do. But they were like, oh, yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure if you had gotten a lock picking kit, like I'm sure that those locks are not that difficult to pick. No, and I'm pretty sure that the assembly actually has... Um, like a, a big nut on the outside to like hold the housing in place. So I probably could have just unscrewed it that way and jiggled it until it fell apart and opened anyway. Um, I mean, the idea is it's more like if I slow someone down, that'll keep them from like casually walking by and stealing tools, which like, oh, I don't need that in my garage. No one's casually walking through my garage right. stealing tools. I need it to always be open so that when I'm done, I can like lob the tool across the garage and land it in the open drawer. You know? Maybe so today, drawer, today's it? binary jazz question was, how many buckets do you own? How many buckets do you yeah. own? <clears throat> Which I feel is, oh, a, is a pretty, is a pretty good. Do you, want, do, you, do you want to tour my bucket? I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> I really don't need to. Like half um, of them are just white buckets with the I feel the like a tour of my room. apartment would just be me tilting my camera. <laughs> 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 and then you'd see Robin. <laughs> yeah, right. The whole facade would be ruined. Yeah, yeah, no, like, and really, you only need to tilt your camera like five inches to see Robin, because really, he's just right over there. He's just like sitting on the couch, like, "Hi guys, I'm here for the show. <laughs> I'm participating." No, he leaves. He goes into the bedroom or puts his headphones on because he doesn't want to be spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> Does he wait? I guess he must wait until the actual show is released. So he waits an entire week. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that, that's, that's hardcore. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Or, or wait, does he actually have access to the server? We just don't know it. Like Chris will upload it later. He'll be like, yeah, I got it. <laughs> he's like, I, I think he likes it, but I don't think he's that into it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> Same. Anyway, shout out to Ryan. I like hanging out. The recording part's secondary. <laughs> hey, that's an important part of the job, dude. <laughs> it's a huge component. <laughs> I mean, I guess this part makes it a podcast. Otherwise, it would literally just be a hangout for an hour. A weird, a weird yeah, exactly. Of hangout. And, and, and the I, bumpers and, like, the extensive yeah. editing that I do. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. 
You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.